Hi, this is Dr. Emily Park with your next Functional Health Minute. Today, I'd like to explore looking at body composition. So the scale gives you a weight, right? And so that's obviously just how much you overall weigh, but doesn't tell you at all what you're made up of. Doing an advanced body composition analysis can really let you know what's going on with your body fat, with your lean muscle mass, and your water. So that's one of the reasons why I have what's called an in-body 570 advanced body composition analysis analyzer at the office. So obviously it gives you your weight, but it gives you all the other things I just mentioned. I'm going to show you a report and kind of walk you through it. Um, and I'm also going to talk about like why you might want to really you know, use the testing tool to figure out what your specific body composition is and how you can work on it. So this is um, an example of a report. Um, and I'm going to kind of go over all of the different um, items on this report. And um, by the way, uh, it, you know, if you come and get one done, you get a printout every single time. And then I don't know if you can see at the bottom, there's also, I know it's backwards, but there's also um, like a trend of, you know, what, you know, the important points are like the weight, the skeletal muscle mass, the percent body fat and the, and the water weight of every single um, time that you've ever done the test, which you'll get a new, you get a new printout every time that you do it. So obviously um, the, the top gives you kind of like a, a summary, right? So it'll tell you how much do you weigh, right? That's your total weight. And then it'll give you how much of your weight is considered lean body mass, right? And then how much is considered dry lean mass. So how much is extracellular water and intracellular water? So obviously, you know, like our bodies are made up of, of mostly water, right? So it'll tell you how much is located inside the cells. That's intracellular water and extracellular water, how much is outside the cells. Now that one can be really important. That can give us clues as to really like your hydration status and um, inflammatory status too. So if, like, let's say you're inflamed, um, you know, you, you, uh, you know, completely went off your diet plan, for example, we well, might actually be holding on to some extra water weight from that inflammation. And then of course, more serious conditions, like if you, you know, someone has a cardiac condition and, you know, they may be rotating fluid because, you know, their um, heart function might not be that good. You can also, you know, determine these on this test as well. So the next category is looking at the muscle, muscle fat analysis. And um, that I like uh, this, this is very, this portion is really very telling. So it's your body weight and it's your skeletal muscle mass and your body fat mass. So um, this middle section, I'll hold it up here. Um, you can see this person, um, this person has almost like a C curve to this. So that what that means right away without even looking at the numbers is that this, this person has more body fat than they should um, and relative to the amount of lean muscle mass and their weight. So that's like, so if their weight is high, their muscle mass is lower relative to their weight um, and their percent body fat is high. So that's kind of almost like a C. And if, if you have an eye-like pattern, that means everything is um, kind of, you know, on the same line. So it means your weight, your skeletal muscle mass, and your percent body fat are all, you know, kind of in line. Now, you can, um, that may be ideal. Um, if, you're, if you're in, I don't know if you can see these little um, gray dashes there, that um, is kind of like the, an ideal range for you specifically. So if you're, you know, um, female, age 44, you know, you're 5'1", um, that's kind of puts it into um, where the ideal range is for you. So you could still have an eye, uh, have an eye like meaning you can still have a, your, your weight, your muscle mass, and your body fat all be kind of in line, um, but they could all be way over here, which, you know, would, would indicate that you, you know, you probably do want to, you would probably want to lose some body fat still, but your, your muscle mass may be good or over. Then there's the D pattern. So that would be the opposite of this. Instead of looking this way, it would look like this. So that is someone who has a lot of skeletal muscle mass and a lot of lean body mass. So um, that may be, you know, someone like a weightlifter, for example, you know, someone who kind of, you know, does um, athletics for a living and carries more um, lean muscle mass than the average person. So ideally you want your pet little pattern there to look like an I or a D and not a C. Um, then the next section um, is kind of the obesity analysis, and there's two numbers on there. There's your BMI, your body mass index, 
Um, and then there's your percent body fat. Now, body mass index can be a little deceiving because that athlete person I was just talking about, they may weigh more um, than the average person does, but it's healthy weight, right? It's like lean muscle mass, it's not high body fat, but the body mass index does not take that into consideration. So that person may have a quote high BMI and maybe considered if you look it up, overweight, right? A, a body mass index of over 25 is considered overweight. And then over 30 would be considered obese and then 35 morbidly obese. So, um, so your athlete may be considered, you know, overweight or even obese if they have, if they, if they're carrying a lot of lean muscle mass and that's not really, um, you know, it's not really true, right? They, they, they weigh more, but it's good, healthy mass. Um, so you, you can use the body mass index um, as kind of like a trend, especially if someone is over overweight from too much body fat, right? We, the first goal is to get them below 25, um, into that 20 to 25 range is considered normal. And then of course, looking at the body fat, um, the body fat mass, that's more um, like how, mu how many pounds of body fat are you overall carrying, right? So that's the obesity analysis. Um, to the side, on the sidebar here, and um, looking, you can get really granular with, it, it gets really granular with how much fat is in each of the different areas that the um, in-body analyzed. So, and it'll give you, it'll also, it'll give you a percentage and pounds. So you can say like how much fat is in your right arm, your right leg, your left leg, your trunk, et cetera, right? It'll give you some really good information there. And then they give you a visceral fat number. So visceral fat is that inflammatory um, abdominal fat that's in between your organs. So there's subcutaneous fat, which is like fat on that, you know, like on the outsides of our bodies. Um, and then there's that visceral, you know, intra-abdominal fat. And that's important to know what your level is because if it's if it's high and in this in body uses if it's above 10 then your you know risk for cardiometabolic disease you know goes way up it's it's, it's really uh, having too much visceral fat is is really inflammatory and is is not a, it's not a good predictor of, of how you're going to do long term especially for cardiovascular disease and um, metabolic dis disease like diabetes and whatnot so that um, that's the sidebar here. And then next is looking at the segmental lean analysis. So this kind of, this goes into right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg, and trunk. Um, and it'll tell you like right, it tells you the, the pounds of lean mass you have in each of those areas. And it also tells you the percentage. Um, uh, again, relative to, you know, the gray bars, again, like, you know, uh, other people in your same like age and height and, and um, sex. So um, it'll give you, so it'll give you an idea of where you are um, and where you should be. And in this person's analysis, their, their, um, their arms and their trunk are like, are, they have more muscle mass there than the average person. And in their legs, they have slightly less muscle mass there than the average for their person. But overall, um, they have um, a good amount of muscle mass. The top of the very top um, of the in-body will tell you what it, what it um, foresees as your ideal, right? So in this person's example, it wants you, it says, you know, negative 15. It wants this person to lose 15 pounds of fat, but it does not need this person to gain any lean muscle mass. So it'll kind of give you an, an idea of, you know, what, um, what the goals are, which I think can be really important. And then the last part is this ratio between extracellular body water and intracellular body water. And it, it gives, it's this one here. Um, and it gives you an idea, like I was saying, of kind of like fluid status. Um, and so it, you can tell, I mean, if it's very low, like you can say, you can tell if, you know, someone's dehydrated or if it's, you know, very high, you can, you know, don't, you can know someone's retaining more, you get retaining fluid. Um, so how often would you want to go get, you know, do a, an in-body analysis? Uh, it depends. It depends on what's going on and what your goals are, but um, no need to do it any more than once a week, right? Um, and that, and I would only recommend doing it, one, you know, every one to two weeks if you're, you're, you have a goal in mind. Like in other words, if you're trying to actively lose body fat or, you know, you're trying to gain lean muscle mass, or it could even be if, you know, someone's, you know, very underweight and, you know, I'm putting, I'm putting them on like, a higher calorie, you know, diet, trying to, you know, get them to gain weight, um, we can see how that is working. Um, and then of course, with weight loss, it's really great, because you can see, like, what, you know, are you, is that, you know, what is that person, you know, for example, not eating enough protein, and when they're losing their weight, um, you know, they're, they're losing lean body mass, too. It's, it's, 
it is pretty difficult when you're losing weight to lose only body fat, um, especially if you have you know a, a fair amount of weight to lose at some point. Um, you're going to take a little hit in the lean muscle mass, but there are strategies, you know, that we can do to, um, you know, get that lean muscle mass back, um, which I'll talk about in a future video. So I hope this kind of explains, you know, a little bit of, you know, why, you know, you might want to consider doing, you know, an in-body 570 analysis. The 570 is a more advanced um, version of the in-body that gives all of this, you know, specific detail. Um, we do obviously have it at the office. If you're a current patient already, um, it's just part of you being a patient, you know, you can, you know, use it anytime you come to the office or you can even, you know, call and um, schedule an in-body. It does not take very long. It's only, it takes about 30 seconds. The only caveat I will say to actually physically doing the test is you have to compare apples to apples. So if you do the test, you know, fasting, first thing in the morning before you exercise, the next time you do it, you want to do it at that same time. That really applies to, you know, track that applies to tracking weight or body composition, no matter what you're doing. Because if you think about it logically, you know, if you do, if you do a test fasting first thing in the morning, and then the following week, you know, you do it at 5 p.m. after you've eaten all your food and worked out, like it's going to, you know, it's going to give you different data. So you want to kind of compare apples to apples. Um, then there's a couple other like minor things, like obviously, you know, you want to make sure your bladder is empty. Um, we, it will, we will ask you to take off like all of your, you know, jewelry. Um, you're going to be taking off your shoes and socks. Um, you'll, it wants you to kind of have a normalized body temperature. So for us here in Arizona, if, you know, you're out, you know, in 115 degree weather, um, it's not a great idea, you know, for a, a long period of time, it, it's not going to be as accurate if you come inside and, and pop on an in-body right away. Like you want to kind of normalize to room temperature, same in colder conditions, right? Like you want to make sure your, your, you know, body temperature is as normal as possible, um, before you do, before you do the in-body. And then there's certain people that, um, you know, don't, you know, you, you wouldn't want to do an in-body because it does use, uh, bio impedance. So it sends an electrical signal. Um, through your body. Um, even the regular body composition scales you can get, you know, for home use, um, do that as well. So obviously people that have implanted electronic devices like pacemakers and, um, you know, insulin pumps, um, nerve stimulators, things like that, you, you, know, you probably want to, you know, be cautious on the safe side and not do it. And then of course, pregnant women. And, and for pregnant women, it's really because the machine's not set up to analyze and figure out like what's what's baby and what's not. Um, so it's well, not going to really do anything harmful, but it, you know, it's just not going to be an accurate um, reflection. So I hope this explain, helps explain a little bit about body composition analysis, what it is, the information you get from it, and why you might want to consider doing it. If you're not a patient um, at Arizona Wellness Medicine, you can still um, call and schedule an appointment to come in and do it. It's really quick. I mean, you'll be in and out of the office in just a few minutes, um, and you'll, you'll get to keep your, your printout, your handout. So this is Dr. Emily Park with today's Functional Health Minute.